this week we're going to do something a little scary. We're going to be talking about spider webs. Whoa. Welcome back to Crafty Bastard Games. I'm your host, Cyrus, the Crafty Bastard Gamer. This week we're doing something a little deeply psychological. A lot of us have some innate fear of spiders, and I think spider webs are a really fun way to showcase that, what remains, what's hiding, what's lurking beneath. Uh, so I've created a small craft. This is probably the easiest of the three, uh, but it, it does still work. It's a little cartoonish, and when it came to slimes, cartoonish is a good thing. Uh, for spider webs, you want it to be a little more creepy, but I think you're still going to get the point across. It's a little big, it's a little bulky, but this will work both for spider webs, but also for your web spells, those entrapment spells uh, where you catch people. So it doesn't just have to be the silky webs that come out of spider. This could be a whole manner of things that are web-like. Um, it's great to use with miniatures, and I think it sets a tone, especially when the miniatures are there, on top of or even underneath the spider webs that you've prepared. So you only need a few things. So let's go to the crafting room and see what it takes to make them. So I think it might be interesting to start by explaining where I came up with the idea. Um, it wasn't exactly from the time my players fought that legion of spiders, um, as you might think. It was actually from the gaming surface when I was preparing for something else. Um, just to the side here, I have three hot glue guns that are all warming up. And just beneath one of them, you'd find something like this. I don't know if you can quite see it, but these beautiful gossamer strands that are coming off of the blobs that fall out. And most of us might call these wisps. And you know wisps be hatin'. But when it was in a form like this, I thought it might be interesting. And that's what inspired the idea to make spider webs. And that's what informed the idea for me to make spell templates as well. For our craft list, we're going to need three things. The first is the silicone mat, like I've been using before. Always important. I suggest you get one. The second is going to be the hot glue gun. Now, I've got three different ones because I wanted to see how they operate differently. The first one is the cheap hot glue gun that I've been using for a while now for these crafts. Uh, you can see I have taken off the rubber, the silicone tip, to expose the metal tip. Uh, that's very useful. The second one is the one that DM Scotty suggested we all get, as I knocked my other one over. Uh, yeah, this is pretty hot and puts out a large volume of, of hot glue, and the tip is also very narrow. The third is the one that started it all, and it's my high temperature hot glue gun. It also has a very narrow tip to it, um, and it puts out a higher glue, so who knows what that does for these strands of hot glue. And the third thing you're gonna need are hot glue sticks. Of course, you can always get the clear hot glue sticks. Those are uh, pretty universal. But I also got some of the colored glue sticks, like I was using the red and the gold and the blue and the green. It's the same kind of thing. But there's some silver in here and also some white. I'm really interested to see what the white ones look like and how this glue holds up to the different treatments. Now, of course, I'm only gonna use the hot glue gun for these, because I don't want to ruin the others, but it'll still be a nice experiment to see what it all looks like. I'm going to use my Warforged. His name is Chief. He is going to be our dummy. And I've got a couple of other items, and I'll show you um, how we can use these. Just to have something small, maybe the size of a thimble, or just, you know, maybe a one inch by one inch size kind of thing. Uh, because we may want to do something that has a third dimensional effect to it once we make it. And of course, I've got my spider for inspiration. So let's try the basic idea, and that is going to be creating lines just like the spell templates. So I'm going to use the grid lines like I did before just as a guide. It doesn't have to be specific, but I want to create a line, sort of a cross, maybe a star diagonal, and then I'm going to link all the pieces in between. I'm using the cheap hot glue with the silver. I want to see what that looks like. So I'm just going to kind of pump some out. I'm not going to be too neat this time, because I'm going to do a little better job on the next go-around. 
I just want to see what the silver looks like. And what's funny is I can see a little bit of the colors from the previous spell templates coming through. So it's, it's not exactly the most pristine silver I've ever seen, but uh, I'm getting the idea of what it's going to look like. All right, as they finish cooling, the thinner one is already ready to go. What's great about the silicone mat is it helps wick away some of the heat. The thicker one, on the other hand, is still kind of warm, so I might want to give it just another moment. Um, but it's a good time to con contemplate what we're making this for. If it's going to be a spider web, it's probably not going to be the biggest thing. But if it's going to be a magical web spell, those are usually much larger. And I'll list on screen exactly what the uh, effects are for the Pathfinder web spell and the Dungeons and Dragons web spell. They're very similar because they were basically the same game when that spell was made. Um, but, alright, let's take a peek at this. Alright, very basic. But, you know what, it works. Uh, I especially like that it does have the glitter for a magical spell effect. You know, you cast this on the player, maybe it's holding them down. Uh, this thicker one, I don't know, kind of looks more like a ship's wheel. And again, forgive the color variation, because that was the last glue um, coming back through. Uh, yeah, it works okay, maybe. Um, so thinner is better and picking up a little bit of the silver I think looks kind of nice. Uh, let's try it with the white speckled glue and see what that does. All right, so you can barely see it on screen there. That's how light this is. But uh, in application, I think it looks pretty dang good. Um, it's another one that looks very light, very fair but when placed on someone who's got the web spell, um, it seems a little more delicate. I mean, it, it's, it's about the same almost, but you can tell there's a little bit of a difference. Um, I like that, I think it looks pretty good. It'll be interesting to see what it looks like on darker surfaces. All right, so I tried a different technique, so maybe like a spider web in the corner or something. Put it up against a wall or you know this roof or something yeah that works pretty good too um you know i you may want to make it a little more organic looking or yeah, you know the the classic spider web shape but that that works pretty good too and something interesting while i was waiting on that to cool i was experimenting with just drizzling and that's kind of where the original idea came from i just drizzled some of the silver around and made a really fantastically interesting uh, maybe web. This is something that maybe you could just start to... Let me try it here. So I've got it. Nope, need to get another one. And you can either pump it or maybe press from behind and get a little bit going and then just kind of crisscross back and forth a much larger surface. Because if you're doing a web spell in Pathfinder, you usually have to do it between like a 20 foot radius between two objects. So maybe you could customize a shape. Maybe do a little bit crisscross so it'll stick together. So this is with the white. And look at that. Ooh. <laughs> so maybe I ruined it, but maybe, maybe that works. Look at that. That's really interesting. That is very spider webby if I've ever seen it. So you've got the white, you've got a little bit of glisten from the silver inside of it. But yeah, okay. Come here, buddy. Boom. That looks pretty nasty. And I would believe that, I, that he is stuck in some sort of web spell there. That's interesting. I'm gonna jump ahead to my other two hot glue guns. Here's the one that Scotty suggested we all get. And of course, I'm not gonna use the other hot glue types. I'm just gonna see about volume and how much this puts out. And just having used this before, you've gotta be very gentle. I've already got a huge glob of glue there, but you gotta be very meaningful if you want it to be thin. So I'm gonna start over here. 
right, so I know that one is still hot and I let it cool already for just a couple moments, but pulling this other one up, you know, it, the thinner you get, the less it wants to hold any kind of form or I don't know, I, I don't like that as much. Now granted, this could still be laid over your guy and that's, that's okay. Um, now, one of the things that I started with was a much bigger, thicker shape. So this is what I meant about being very cartoonish. So if you do it thicker, I think that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you just want to kind of own up to what you're doing. You want a big, sticky, white kind of webbing as opposed to uh, a thin, creepy webbing. And that works too. And so the way I did this one, it actually has a bit of a concave or a convex to it, is to put something underneath the mat. And I'll go ahead and strip the rest of this away and place this sort of cap underneath. All right, now that it's cooled, take the shape away and peel this off. And you can even do it when it's still warm, lean it over something else until it cools a bit more and it'll retain the shape. But you know, after having done the other hot glue and with the glitter, it gives it a rigidity that I like that makes it easier to, to hot glue if it was gonna be part of a, a permanent piece. This works okay. I mean, you can see it's still a little clear. Um, sometimes when it lays on the mat and you peel it off, it gets sort of a matte color, M-A-T-T-E, not M-A-T color, uh, on the underneath side. But on the top side, it's more glossy. So yeah, this could work too. Um, didn't come out quite as good as my other version, but you know, there you go. That looks all right. I want to try that drizzle technique here as well with my uh, DM Scotty approved. And part of it is you almost have to squeeze and then sweep across because you might get a glob at first and you wouldn't want to drop that right down the middle. This puts out so much glue that you can do quite a bit with one long stick. All right. Okay, let's see what this one cured up to look like. Okay, it's still a little stringy, a little stretchy, but uh, yeah, that works pretty good too. It's a little more shiny. It's a little more silken. Uh, I think it still works though, because sometimes you see the spider webs and they really catch the sunlight especially in the morning when they've got moisture to them. So yeah, I think that works okay. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I think that works all right. So this could be, oh, especially if you were to wrap them up. Yeah, that's that's a bad day for Chief. But okay, you know, and it's got a lot of spring to it. So this is one you could possibly use and reuse and throw on something. Seems kind of durable. So that might work pretty good too. All right, lastly, we're gonna try the high temperature uh, glue gun that inspired things in the first place. It's already dripping some hot glue, so let's just see what this comes out to look like. I like having the control of the nozzle. I can kind of see where it's going a little bit better. And what's weird about the high temperature, it's great for certain uh, projects, but it seems to set almost faster because it's hotter. I don't know, maybe I've just had bad experience. Maybe I don't know how to use a high temperature as opposed to a different kind, but, huh. All right, you might have noticed I experiment a little bit while, while that first bit was drying. So here is the thicker traditional spider web, and that one came out okay. You know, um, it's better than the high volume. Um, it's still very thin and very wispy. I think it's something that you could always glue together, take out a segment, and make it bend in a little bit more. That might be better than arching the, uh, the mat a little bit. <clears throat> so while these were drying, I went ahead and experimented a little bit, um, but you can see this one came out about as good as the other hot glue gun. Um, it's still kind of bendy and stretchy. Might look a little better, I just like having the control. Um, and I was just thinking, instead of doing a bend to the silicone mat, you could always cut out one of these sections and glue it back together and get yourself a little bend in it that way. That might be another alternative. But let's see how these came out.
And so if you compare these side by side, and of course I did a little bit more here, but this one seems to be thicker, have a little more substance to it. These seem to be a little more uniform. Um, I bet I could do a lot more with this, but I like the structure of this kind. So it's kind of interesting that from the very beginning, my idea was more based on this, but it's the kind I like the least. This is a little bit better, but when I got the cheaper kind of hot glue with a little bit of a sparkle to it, be it the white or the silver, I actually like this the best. I think it works especially for organic spider webs, but you could do this for the magical kind and that little bit of sparkly glitter is going to set it aside and tell your players that this is a magical spell. Whichever way you look at it, I think it looks pretty cool. When it comes to the spell template style, I gotta say that I'm not as pleased with the regular hot glue unless you don't go as thin as all this. That doesn't work quite as well. You're gonna wanna go thick. Yes, it's cartoonish, but it looks pretty strong. It looks as if it would be really sticky and it would hold your players down, that it actually has some weight to it. Uh, but my favorite overall has been doing it with just these, just the, um, the cheap dollar store with the glitter in them. You can sell it as natural or magical, whichever way. So you can use these again and again. You could probably make them just a little bit thicker, but not too much because it starts to look like those spell templates. But you can see the silver and the white both look pretty great. So that would be my recommendation if you're going to be doing something like this in the future. All right, so that was a fairly straightforward and simple craft. Uh, I wish I had come up with it much sooner than I did because in a previous campaign of mine, uh, my players went up against a whole legion of spiders, and they were undead spiders too, which was kind of freaky. Um, and it would have been neat to have these web spells or web templates to place on the players when they were trapped or to have left behind if a spider had remained somewhere too long. So useful and still kind of creepy. And that's gonna wrap up my hot glue challenge. Come back next time, I'll get more into hand making terrain, set pieces and stuff like that. So if you haven't already, please do me a huge favor, hit the like button, the thumbs up button, whatever it happens to be where you're watching this video, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, and most importantly of all, keep crafting. And I'll see you next time. Welcome back to the Crafty Bastard Gamer. I'm your host, Cyrus, the Crafty...